Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, a 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz found in lesson 11 of the biology one module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. Okay, so of course, to ace this question, we need to understand what the lymphatic system is and how it works. Now, you've probably heard by this point in time a lot about arteries and veins. Arteries take the blood away from the heart and vein brings the blood back around to the heart. What you may not have heard a lot about before is that along the way, a lot of the liquid in the blood actually gets lost. So picture this. Imagine we have these capillaries that the blood travels through. So the blood is gonna come from the arteries from the heart, and it's gonna have a lot of pressure because the heart just pumped it out. Then it's gonna hit these tiny little capillaries. And when that happens, there's so much pressure that the red blood cells, the cells are typically too big to get out, but a lot of the liquid that's floating around in the blood is gonna squeeze out through the sides of these capillaries. You're gonna have a lot of blood that squeezes out. Well, you know, that doesn't seem like too big of a deal, but over time, that's going to be a really big problem because we're going to have less and less fluid in our blood and more and more fluid just floating around in our body. So that's where the lymphatic system comes in. And the lymphatic system essentially picks up that fluid that's floating around here and in these special ducts, takes that fluid and drops it back into the blood. So you can see here in this image, we have all these different green lines all through here where the, lymph, the lymphatic system is going to be carrying that fluid and that liquid back. And eventually you'll notice it drops it into the subclavian veins. It drops it into these veins. Now, something about the lymphatic system, which is also true of veins, is that there's very low pressure. In the arteries, we have all this high pressure. The blood wants to get shot forward. By the time it hits the lymphatic system in the veins, it started to run out of energy. So we need to use lots of different tricks to keep it moving in the direction we want it to, especially because we're asking it to move against gravity. And so a few of those tricks, first off, we have all these muscles. As we move around, the muscles will squeeze the lymphatic system and the veins and kind of push that up. At the same time, we have these special valves. So I'm drawing here part of the lymphatic system. We have these awesome valves that kind of look like this. They have these two flaps. And so what happens is the lymph, which is what we call that fluid, will come up. But when it goes to fall back down, the valves are built in such a way that they'll snap shut. And so it can't fall back down once it gets pushed up. So those are a couple of cool tricks that we have that allow us to get that low pressure lymph back where we want it to be, back into the blood. Now that we know all that, let's go ahead and tackle this question. All right, so in this question, it's basically asking us about common features between both lymph vessels and veins, features that they share. But we gotta pay attention here. The question's asking us for a statement that does not accurately describe a common feature. So which of these things is not like the others? Well, if we look down here, let's start with this second one. Valves allow only for unidirectional flow. And that's absolutely right. We talked about it. We have these valves. They're gonna prevent that lymph or the blood in the case of veins from falling backwards. So this one, is going to be definitely true and therefore not the right answer, sadly. So let's cross that off. Now, as we continue to move down, pressure within the vessels is low relative to that of arteries. Absolutely, Ar the arteries, it's closer to the heart. It's getting that push. By the, time get, by the time we get to the veins and the lymphatic system, not so much. So let's go ahead and cross this off. Next, skeletal muscles assist in the movement of fluid through the vessel. And we talked about that too. That's true in both of these low pressure vessels in the lymphatic system and in veins as well. So let's go ahead and cross this off. That leaves us with our last option, which says small vessels lead to large vessels, which lead to the heart. And although it's true that small vessels lead to large vessels, remember we saw that the lymph actually gets dropped back into the blood before the heart, into the subclavian vein to be precise. And so this one is going to be false, which means it's our correct answer. Let's go ahead and check it out. Awesome, perfect. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. If you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. We look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.